Hello guys and welcome back for a brand new video commentary for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King patch 2.02 version 8.3. Today we're gonna cast a game between DJP and his Elven faction against Eternal and his Dwarf faction on the map Erin Lair. But before we're gonna jump into today's video guys, I would really, really appreciate it if we can have 50 likes on this video. If you don't know, the likes help me out so much. And if you didn't do it yet, or if this is your very first time on my channel and you are looking for more content based on the Battle for Middle Earth games in the future, please consider subscribing as well. Before losing any more time, let's get it started. And here we go. At the bottom side of the map, we have the blue Elven player DJ Premier. And his opponent at the top side is the yellow dwarf player Eternal. Eternal starting with a mineshaft and an early Hall of Warriors. That means he's gonna go for the creep. On the other side we will have two Malon trees coming up for the Elven player. On the bottom side of the map. And yeah, this is the edited version of the map Erin Lair by the way guys. And for me it looks pretty much the same. I think they changed this area right there. Now you can make multiple mineshafts or you know Malon trees in the back side of your fortress. Which is actually great for the Dwarf player, so if he can actually sneak maybe a mineshaft around this side, he can go for a, you know, big push unseen, if the Elven player is not paying attention. Alright, we have three Malon trees up on the fields now for DJ Premier, and he is going for the barracks. On the other side, Eternal is building a mineshaft here, so I'm assuming he's gonna go for the creep with the pikemen. And you can do that easily by looting the troll away, by using the builder. And as the troll is going back to the lair, he won't be able to attack your pikemen, so you can do that without taking any damage, super easy and super fast. Alright, Barax is up on the field and he's actually choosing to get some Lurian Arches first. That means he's actually expecting the Dwarf player Eternal to go for an offensive push at the beginning of the game. Um, if you don't know, the very recent version of the patch 2.02, that is the version 8.3 by the way, um, is including the nerf to the archers to the lairs. So that means the Lorian archers, they will be easily able to take down the works, but the damage output from those archers on the lair is gonna be very slow, and very low, I mean, and they won't be, they will need a lot of time actually to take it down. In the meantime, Eternal was successfully able to creep this troll lair. He is now, and also quite healthy. He has a level 2 pikeman now, and the archers are coming. Um, he didn't capture this signal fire just yet. He's gonna cancel the mineshaft here. I think um, I didn't I don't think he was able to see those archers the Archers were able um, to kill the works by the way from the lair and The second unit from DJP are gonna be those Lorian warriors. So they're gonna try to finish off the lair uh, In the meantime Eternal is gonna be able to capture this signal fire for himself That's gonna increase his vision control in the map as he is going for another mineshaft and I'm assuming he's gonna use this pathway to go for the first big push. We have two guardians by the way inside the mineshaft. Um, they are coming out right there. Right, here's the rallying call ability available. The question is gonna be, is DJP ready to defend this? He has one archer, one Lorian warrior battalion and another archer battalion is just coming out of the barracks. But we know with the buff of the rallying call, those guardians and those pikes, they are quite tough and really, really hard to take down. Alright, smart move from DJP not using the rallying call on only one, on only one archer battalion. He's gonna group them, he's also using the aggressive stance to maximize the damage output. And focusing down the pikemen when they are in the porcupine formation is a mistake, because they are quite tanky, they can tank a lot of damage. And he has to give up this Malon tree right there. Um, the vision from Eternal is that much, so he didn't see this Malon tree just yet. He will be able to see it now, and I'm assuming he should be also he should be also able to take down this Malon tree by the way, which is a great start into the game from the dwarf player Eternal. And those guardians are still quite healthy, and also this Malon tree has to get demolished by the Alvin player DJ Premier. But he has now his Haldir on the field, boys. With the help of the Haldir, he might be able to protect this Malon tree in the back. If he loses that as well, that would be absolute fiesta and quite unfortunate for the Elven player DJ Premier. In the meantime, we can take a look into the minimap. 
a tunnel was able to expand quite nicely. He's gonna be even able to take down another Malone tree. This one should be protected by Haldir and those pikemen and archers. But he was forced to demolish two Malone trees and he's gonna end up losing one of them. Eternal now has to be careful, you can also try to save those units. They are really close to hit level 2. That's gonna give them the chance and the opportunity to heal up again. Which is pretty damn good. Okay, there is a mineshaft coming up. No, Malone tree, my bad guys, sorry, my bad, I didn't see that. There is a mineshaft here from Eternal and here. So he has two mineshafts, you know, in the both side lanes. And that's the beautiful part about those mobile factions like dwarves and goblins, as you know. They can attack you from multiple sides. It's pretty much all the time, you know, and then when it's gonna be dangerous and if they have a mineshaft close by, they can just enter this mineshaft again and then escape also. That's really, really, uh, you know, those mobile factions are really great to play if you know how to play them, obviously. Alright, it looks like Eternal is, you know, Eternal is now, was able to see this army from the Alvin player and Haldir. And he's like, okay, you know what, you are, you know, protecting this area. So I'm just gonna use the second mineshaft I have at the bottom side of the map. And I'm gonna, you know, attack you from here. And if you're gonna go come back, I'm just gonna leave, enter the mineshaft, and do that all the time. Like Tom and Jerry, cat and mouse. And he's going for the forge works. That means we're gonna have some battle wagon action. And that also means he's potentially gonna get the, you know, battle wagon with the banner carry upgrade. For the double buff for the next attack. He's gonna lose this mineshaft though. And we're gonna take a look into recurrent power points and command points from the players. Eternal, the dwarf player at the top side, has 500 command points collected, 3 power points available for him after starting with the rallying call, which is by the way available for the next fight. On the other side, we have also rallying call start from the Alvin player DJ Premier. He has actually uh, 650 command points available. Even after losing so many, so multiple Malone trees at the beginning of the game, he was able to expand quite nicely. He's creeping the troll at the bottom right side now. We have still the creeps here, the war creep at the top, you know, bottom right and top left. But besides that, all the other creeps, never mind, also this work is still on the field, by the way. Um, that's gonna be the third creep getting taken down from the map. Remember, the Alvin player was also able to creep this uh, work layer around this area, right there. Beautiful, this is still under control from uh, Eternal, by the way. Um, those signal fires are actually quite important to take for the Elven player, especially if you are playing against goblins or dwarves, because they're gonna help you to scout those mineshafts. Talking about mineshafts and talking about sneaky attacks, there we go. He was using the oil bottle, by the way, on this Malone tree, and now the double buff, is act double buff action is going on. Beautiful. He can actually deal so much damage, but he gotta be careful with the battle wagon. They can even finish off the barracks if they want to. Is this going to be the case? He's surrounding it, clamping to maximize the damage output. DGP is running right into the fire, don't do that. Oh my godness, guys, do you see that? How much damage he's taking from this fire on the ground? Oh, that is the definition of Fiesta, boys. Oh my god, man, you shouldn't do that. He lost so many units for no reason. This Malone tree is also gonna be gone. And yeah, the pressure is real, and during all this time, the Dwarf player Eternal is being untouched. His eco is great. His mine shafts are gonna hit level 2 pretty fast. This one is already level 2. This one is really close. This one is pretty new in the back. But this one, you know, is gonna hit level 2 pretty soon as well. Beautiful. I mean, on the bright side, if there is any, uh, the Alvin player doesn't lose so many units. Unlike this one time, he is running into the fire for no reason. <laughs> but he's actually doing a great job saving his units. And that can be the tricky part about facing against elves. You're gonna attack him all the time. Yes, you will be able to take down his Malone trees all the time, but they have also seen before that even after losing so much, he has still a decent amount of resources and a decent amount of command points. So, if he can save his units all the time, after defending a couple of times, he can actually go for a counter-attack, which might be a big success. Let's see if this is going to be the case. Almost 8 power points collected by DJP, by the way, 525 command points available. On the other side, the Dwarf player Eternal has 575, and nearly 9 power points collected. He can go for the creep now, but it looks like he prefers to focus more on the map control and to take down some of those Malone trees all the time. And he was doing a great job so far in this game against DJP's Alvin faction. Now he has also King Brent on the field. 
as he is going for another attack. Battlebagon is here for the double buff action and the Alvin player doesn't have the power points just yet for the enshrouding mist, which is gonna be necessary to negate the leadership from the Battlebagon and to debuff the enemy units. Otherwise you won't be able to match them and you won't be able to take them down quite fast before losing multiple Malon trees. There is not a single Malon tree just yet, beside this one I mean, that is level 2 um, for the Alvin player DJ Premier. And he might even lose that one. There are a lot of archers on the field though, but barely any pikemen. Aldir is almost level 4, that's the great part. And once he's level 5, we know the leadership is gonna be good. And the dwarf faction, they don't have a way to negate the leadership, unlike the Alvin faction. So in long terms, Alvin player DJP might still come ahead. But as Gimli would like to say, may the best dwarf win. And also Eternal, but also DJP, by the way, boys, are participating in the upcoming Faction Championship tournament. We're gonna start with that pretty soon. And if you wanna watch them live on the stream, you can check me out on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. The link for that is also gonna be in the, in the video description below. Beautiful. Uh, Haldir is focusing down the Battle Wagon, which is the right call. Slam Shot is not available just yet, but we're gonna have Hobbit Special Summon in the backline, which is pretty nice. Field of Galadriel was used from Frodo, scaring off the enemy units, but Mist is gonna negate all the leadership the Dwarven units are gaining from the Battle Wagon. And debuffing them on top of that. Sam Wise Gamgee, Peregrine Tuk, Merry and Frodo himself are joining the fight for the Dwarf player Eternal. Will this be enough? Can they finish off the barracks once again? I mean, you know, even if you finish off the barracks, here's still another one in the back, but it's always nice, you know, to kinda lower his unit's outcome from those barracks. Uh, it would be a really great move from Eternal if he would be able to take down this Malon tree, uh, which is all about to hit level 3. But at the very same time again, all game long Eternal is being untouched. His side of the map was not even seen once by the, by the Alvin player DJ Premier. King Brand is level almost 3. Slamshot is available, actually can be used on those, on those arches. It's dealing, you know, a lot of area of effect damage as you know. But it looks like for now he's just gonna retreat. Uh, Battle Wagon is only level 1 and is quite low. That means he needs to be super careful. I think Haldir has to, you know, literally shoot it twice and then it's gonna be gone. Um, and can't really do much anymore with this Battle Wagon, unfortunately. But he is moving from this side as well. But we have Glorfindel on the field, boys. He's getting dismounted. He is one of the strongest swordsmen in the game for sure, especially once he's level 3 with the Blade of Purity. Slamshot was used on those pikemen. King Brand is level 3, once he's level 4 he will be unlocking the train arches, which is gonna be useless for now, as there are no arches on the field from Eternal just yet. Alright, um, the first tower is coming up for Eternal actually, offensively, I don't know about that one. The great part about that is actually he has only one pikeman around, but the bad part is Glorfindel is level 3 and he is using his plate of purity. His damage output as you know is gonna be insane. And Eternal it will end up losing a builder. That is kind of a big feels Batman. And also the tower will be taken down right after. Dorfindel is almost level 4. Um, Gil can be picked from the power points by the way for the Elven player. King Brand is running for his life. And also this mineshaft from Eternal will be taken down. We have now two battle wagons. One of them has a well. That's going to heal up those allied units around. And the other one is going to buff them. Going to make them stronger. But Mist was already used before, and that means for the next fight it's not gonna be ready if the next fight is gonna happen within the next two minutes. We have still a couple of creeps left. Uh, I missed this creep. I think it was the Alvin play who was able to take it. There is another mineshaft, by the way, um, and Glorfindel is all about to take it down. So far, Eternal was uh, doing a great job, you know, pressure-wise, but it's gonna become harder and harder now because Alvin player now has Haldir, who is level 5, that means leadership for those archers gonna make them even stronger and harder to take down. And also Glorfindel is protecting the other, other side of the map. So maybe trying to attack from the middle is gonna be the goal. There we go. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. He's actually spamming a lot of pikemen. I think um, because of Glorfindel when he's on horse. But also when he's off horse, the pikemen are gonna deal decent amount of damage to the heroes. And also, you know, you can use them to tank the damage. They are quite tanky, as you know, with the Porcupine formation, with the Rallying Call and the buff or leadership from the from the Battle Wagon. And yeah, this Malone tree is gonna go down for sure. 
This is a quite slow Badax, by the way, boys. And this Malone 3 finally managed to hit level 3. This is only level 1. Sometimes during the cast, I can just for some reason uh, left click on those structures. Look at this. I can left click on this Malone 3. And maybe some of you guys know the reason for that. Maybe because Eternal is, you know, using a different language when he's playing this game. Or oh, multiple oil bottles is coming. Uh, you need to now be careful to not stand on the fire. Like again, he's gonna lose multiple units if he's not paying attention. Is he going for the for the? No, he can't go for the uh, fortress. He doesn't have the siege hammers purchased just yet. Let's see. I mean, it looks like he has a lot of units, but again, he's not gonna be able to deal too much damage. The Malone tree level three is also gonna be able to shoot, as you can see. There is an archer on the tree, <laughs> but he's gonna lose that. That's one of the most, if not the most important Malone tree he had on the field. There is not a, a single one which is level 3 beside that one which just got destroyed. At the same time, Glorfindel is actually chasing Gloin down. Gloin will be forced to enter the mineshaft. He's left all alone, by the way. He needs to get mounted and try to, you know, disengage. But he's also quite fast by himself. Should be also just able to run away. Um, battle wagons are being in a tricky situation. Aldir is here in the back and there are a lot of archers shooting them down, by the way. Might be able to take down this level 2 Malone tree, but losing everything for that, is it really worth it? There is no escape plan, because there is not a mineshaft up on the field just yet. It looks like he will be able to save those battle wagons though, that's really good, I like it. Beautiful. And Glorfindel is actually still fighting and trying to take down this mineshaft. He's quite low. Um, I mean, DJP has a lot of power points, he can still go for the heal in the worst case scenario. Uh, to save the Glorfindel, it would be a shame to lose him when you have the power points that are able to save him. To and he's gonna go for the heal anyway. And he's gonna use it immediately just to keep him healthy. Glorfindel has to be careful. I mean, Gloin has to be careful, by the way. He's only level 1. You can use the slam on him. It's not gonna be that effective. Oh, actually, he's dealing massive damage to him, guys. Look at this. Oh my goodness. One more hit needed. Can he finish him off? That's gonna be the question. EJP is playing with fire. All the time, actually. But now he has some Mirkwoods on the field. With the leadership of Haldir, they're gonna hit like a truck, as you know. That's gonna be kinda difficult now for Eternal to deal the damage he's looking for. They have also a lot of protection. As you can see, EJP has a lot of pikemen on the field. And if he positions uh, those archers, you know, around the pikemen, they can't get trampled down by the battle wagons. And now we're gonna see the first push coming. Uh, and also Glorfindel was able to survive, by the way. This Malone tree is gonna get demolished. Um, and yeah, he has also a lot of pikemen. With that being said, he has now some units. They're gonna be able to take down those structures. And Eternal has to react for that. He's doing that by building multiple wall hubs around the fortress. Because he's scared that, you know, the Elven player might go for the base or for the fortress. I don't think that's gonna be the case. Because Glorfindel, who's gonna be the major, you know... Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Legendary 1v1 situation here. I mean, he has Blade of Purity, he's quite tanky, but Gloin is not joking as well. Gloin is also quite tanky, and Glorfindel, unfortunately for the Elven player, has been taken down. DJP was underestimating the Dwarven hero, the daddy of Gimli himself. Alright, we have King Brent here putting in some nice work. In the meantime, a lot of mineshafts are taken down. There are level 3, level 3, and level 2 in the back. It looks like this level 3 mineshaft here will be taken down, unfortunately. Slamshot is available. So maybe you can wait for them to clump and then go for a massive arrow shot. Will this be the case? Nice surrounding here from DJP. He is, you know, actually gonna lose all these units to take down one of those level 3 mineshafts. Is rebuild ready? Yes, it is. Nice speed from Eternal. Not only he will be able to save this mineshaft, but he's also getting so much levels and power points from killing those units. But the Eagles, DJP is like, you know what, I said I'm gonna take this mineshaft down and I'm gonna do that even if you kill every pikeman from me. You're gonna lose that mineshaft. Very well done. I mean, the Eagle use was kinda questionable. Will he be able to take down the builder? Almost one-shotted that, by the way. Another builder will be taken down from Eternal once again. That's the second time that happens. Um, King Brand is only level 5. If he would be level 7, the Beast Slayer arrow is actually dealing massive damage. To this eagles will they be able to take down even another mine shaft and it looks like it so taking down a builder and two level three mine shafts i would call it a call it worth i think a great straight here for the album player
On the other side, we have 750 command points available, by the way, for DJ Premier. Even after losing so many Malon trees, he manages to stay in the game and to have a great amount of resource income. There is a level 2 barracks, obviously, as we have seen already a couple of Mirkwoods joining the fight. Um, I'm assuming he's reviving his Glorfindel. Would be a shame if not. He was really highly leveled and a super strong hero. You want to have him at your side at all time. This Mineshaft will be taken down. A Mist is gonna be ready for the next fight. Heal is gonna be ready for the next fight. But also Rallying Call is going to be ready for the next fight. He has now 600 command points only after losing a couple of more Malon trees. He has a decent amount of resources as well. Can go maybe for the end smooth. Glorfindel is indeed joining the battlefield once again from the graveyard. <laughs> On the other side we have 375 command points only for Eternal. The one big push from the Alvin player DJP was able to deal so much damage. Can he come back from this situation boys? He's being really really behind right now. There is Klein. He's level 4. Sheik Foundation is going to be ready. He's trying to get some money from creeping this work layer finally. There is still this work layer left on the map, but that's pretty much it. Glorfindel is capturing now the signal fire for himself uh, to increase the vision control. 15 power points collected now by the by the dwarf player. He's gonna go for the barrage ability as King Zane is joining the battlefield for the leadership part. Let's see. And booyah! That's what I was expecting. That's what I was waiting for, boys. Look this damage and. Five seconds ago, holy moly, that was a scary Alvin army. But now, five seconds later, we see only a scared pikeman. That's all he got. I mean, King Brent's... Where is Haldir actually? Did Haldir die from that? No, he's getting away. I was like, oh, that can't be. <laughs> you can't kill him with, you know, that easy when he's full health, obviously. He's gonna be able to save a couple of those units though, which is not terrible. Uh, one pikeman and two archer battalions will be actually able to survive. Yes, also a well around this area. That means they will be recovering over time, even if they are only level 1. Glorfindel is just, you know, doing Glorfindel stuff, taking down those pikemen, no big deal. And, you you know, in a situation like this, when you use him, you know, using his Yeti sword, maybe you need to dis uh, you need to just disengage. He's faster than Glorfindel, by the way. So running away is not gonna be an option. So you need to stand there and fight like a man. And it looks like... Oh, nice one into the backline. Eternal is on point this game, boys. You know, and also DJP was not paying attention as he was trying to take down Gloin with all he got. And not only he will be able to save the Gloin, but he also killed multiple uh, Mirkwoods there, which is amazing for Eternal. We have also King Dane here, by the way. A hero we don't see that quite often from the Dwarf faction, as Eternal is also gonna use the Hobbits on top of the army. He gonna be enough to force Haldir, but also Glorfindel back. We know... The Hobbits are, you know, in Rise of the Witch King, they are one of the good counters to the heroes. And they are using the rocks, they're gonna deal massive damage, so... I mean, you can kinda dodge the incoming damage, because rock is like a skill shot, like a... Like an end throw, for example. So, or like a, like a troll, you know, throwing rocks. So, if, as long as you can keep moving away, they won't be hitting you. But if you, you know, underestimate the damage output from those Hobbits, and you stand still for a while, you will be surprised how much damage they will be able to deal to you. Alright, nice beating off the Enshrouding Mist from the Alvin player DJ Premier. Just disengaging now. King Dane is only level 1. And this is also one of those heroes, right? He has like a like an Iron Hand, you know, um, uh, from, from Gothmog, from the Moro faction, which is granting fear resistance. Uh, but he gets that with level 2. So, I mean, King Dane is like a, like a Wall King statue, I would like to, you know, I would like to say. He's like all of a sports hero from the Dwarf faction. Not the greatest 1v1 hero, not the damage output you are looking for. Still quite tanky with 3000 health with level 1. Has the leadership with level 1 just like King Theodin does or, um, you know, like Elrond does. Uh, with level 2, he's giving you fear resistance, which can be very good against some factions like, for example, Boromir from the Man of the West. Or, you know, Screech from the Mordo faction or Drama Troll from the Mordo faction. So, a lot of ways you can actually deny that with level 2 only. With level 5, it's gonna be a buff and a debuff at the same time, so you can choose, you know, where to use it. If you wanna use it on your units, on your allied units, it's a spell that always stacks, by the way. So it stacks with the leadership from the from the King Dane, right? It stacks with the buff from the Rallying Call, and this also, so you can make your units really strong with that ability. 
and the level 10 is crazy. I mean, level 8 is crazy. Summon Royal Guard, it's actually you're gonna summon like this is more powerful than like summon Hillman, uh, you know, from from Halter, from the Engma faction. Right, uh, it looks like Glorfindel has been taken down once again. King uh, Dane is level 3 now, has the stubborn pride. We have Gloin and he's level almost 5. The Shake Foundation is still available. We know that deals massive damage to the structures. King Brand is putting in some nice work. The Dwarven heroes are quite tanky. Even Mirkwoods are not able to damage them that much. I mean, the reason might be because they are not focusing them down. <laughs> um, the good thing is that there are not more units left. Heroes are still remaining. That was, by the way... What was that? The Lone Tower Special Summon. But I think that was a Golden Arrow. I mean, he used the Golden Arrow when there are no units left. You can't stun enemy units. Enemy heroes, by the way, that's not possible. I was surprised for a second. And yeah, they are quite tanky. That's what I meant. Shake Foundation is still available. It can deal so much damage. So don't be happy that there are no more units left. There is a Siege weapon as a hero on the field. <laughs> This guy is a siege hero, by the way. He's so powerful. The Lone Tower, and inside of that, we have King Brent. But it's just gonna be taken down unless he has Rebuild. Rebuild is available, by the way, boys. So you can use it to delay, which is gonna be the case. Eternal is... I forgot to mention at the beginning of the game, Eternal is being the host player of this game, by the way. So he's gonna be on point a bit more um, and has a bit advantage now over DJP by being on host. You know, being on host in Rise of the Witch King means actually a lot, as you know. Alright, we don't have the Eagles ready just yet, but the Alvin player has 20 power points collected. He has still 960 command points available. He has triple barracks, but not the resource income he's looking for. I mean, he has a couple of units around this area, but he lost almost everything that he had on the field against Gloin, King Dane, and King Brent. I mean, you can maybe deal with one kings, one king, but how the hell are you gonna be able to deal with two kings at the same time? King Brent and King Dane. The Wombo Combo, BB. Alright, Mist is gonna be ready soon. Rallying Call is gonna be ready soon. And most importantly, the Eagle Special Summon is gonna be ready soon. He's going for even another uh, another tower here to protect this mineshaft. There are some heroes inside. King um, Brent in the tower is putting in some nice work as well. But the tower will be finally taken down. At the very same time, he keeps taking down those Malone trees from DJ Premier. King Brent is gonna be able to disengage as more reinforcements are joining from the mineshafts here. Luckily, the eagles are gonna be ready. Um, beside King Brent, there is actually nothing that can hurt them. So with the help of the eagles, he might be able to get some time and to get some more midwoods on the field. I mean, it's not like because he is behind, midwoods are gonna still hit like a truck with the leadership of, King, of Haldir. Talking about Haldir, is he dead? I can't see him on the field anymore. He's trying to put some counter pressure with the with the pikeman, but you can see, you know, with only one pikeman taking down a level three mineshaft is gonna be challenging, as this structure is also able to shoot you down. Eagles very soon, but he's gonna lose one of those barracks in the meantime. Eagles are coming now, boys. They're gonna be used for uh, first of all to take down the tower and the mineshaft potentially, um, to you know deny the escape too, because that's the only way they can escape. Never mind, there is also another mineshaft in the back. And King Dane is taking... Ooh, guys, did you see that? That was the Beast Slayer arrow on one of those eagles. It literally one-shot the eagle. Another build has been taken down from Eternal. Glorfindel is on the field, but Undermine, under his ass! <laughs> that's crazy! Knocking him down, of course, but he's using Blade of Purity. But that was a smart move from Eternal, you know, making an escape tool or getting... Not escaping. Escaping is not an option for the dwarves. He's just getting more reinforcements on the field. But one eagle is still remaining, as the Hobbit special summon from Eternal will be used. And we're gonna have another golden arrow, I think. There we go from Haldir, stunning those units. No, they can't get stunned. There we go. Beautiful. Yes, you can counter that with King Dane's stubborn bright. You're not stunning anything. He's just using the mighty rage. Look, this unit's glowing like crazy. And yes, the leadership from King Dane is getting negated by the mist. But this is a spell and it can't get negated. They are so strong and I love the glow animation. They are burning. They are so powerful. Like over 9,000 boys. Over 9,000. We have really highly ranked heroes. And once this guy hits level 10, which is really, really close. Look, the Shake Foundation damage on the fortress. It deals like a quarter damage from the health. And these units, these heroes are the siege masters. King Dane 
and the daddy of Gimli, side by side, taking down the fortress from the Alvin player DJ Premier. Can they do it or can the Alvin player? No, they can't. I mean, no, he can't. And yes, they can do it. They did it. I mean, on the. Yeah, he's gonna lose Gloin potentially. I mean, these guys are so tanky, boys. Holy moly. Uh, he has zero health, but he refuses to die. Never mind, he's gonna go down. And the funny thing is, King Dane is all about to hit level 8. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I have never seen in a multiplayer game, in a 1v1, the Royal Guard being used from that guy. I mean, let's be honest, King Dane, again, like mentioned before, is one of the heroes. Ooh, yeah. Barrage on your face, brother. Sit down. King Dane can stool him. There is no way. There is no way. He's not taking damage from King Dane at all. I mean, like I said before, King Dane is like a more like a sportive hero, and especially when Glorfindel is using his Blade of Purity. Um, you know, there are few, few swordsmen, few heroes that can actually duel him once this is active. Maybe Aragorn with his Blade Master, you know? Aragorn is also pretty strong. Or Rogash with his uh, Rage of the North or something like this. But besides that, he's quite strong. And you need to kind of, kind of, you know, try to not fight him once this is active. You can just wait, it's not lasting forever. Um, he's doubling his armor and his damage output, that's kind of insane, you know? So with level 3, just run, just wait, don't fight. I mean, I would love to get King Dane back on the field. I mean, his mighty rage is actually quite a poke champ, if you ask me. The glow animation on, on those allied heroes. By the way, we have King Brand level 9. He unfortunately lost his uh, King Dane, but also his... Um, uh, what's the daddy of the Gimli again? Join, <laughs> um, but on the bright side he was able to take down the fortress. I mean, I take it all the time. So if I lose my King Dane and my Gloin for that, and I take your fortress down and solo that, I mean, not duo that, duo takedown, by the way, there was nothing else that, were, that were actually was hitting the fortress. It was only and exclusively uh, Gloin and King Dane. They took the fortress down while being shot by 100 archers and, and Haldir. You know, that's impressive if you ask me, guys. Lone Tower special summon will be used from the power points. I mean, Flute is available. But what's gonna, what's gonna what's the matter if you can't use it? You don't have a fortress anymore on the field. Yes, enough money almost, though. That's gonna be the thing. Uh, and this time, King Dane is not enough, uh, close enough. That means, you know, the Golden Arrow is stunning the enemy units for a while. But they're gonna be released now from the spell. What now? Now what? <laughs> now we have Man of Deal also here with the Fire Arrow upgrade purchased from the special summon. Uh, he doesn't go for the 25 power points ability. He doesn't need it, to be honest. Flutes can be a fiesta right there, but it can be used. And that's the thing with the Fortress. If you don't have it, you can use your power points. And that's actually big fiesta if you are at such a stage of the game, you know, in which we are in the late game, right? And power points, they, they are MVP in the late game. So, Eternal has like 10 power points he can use all the time. They are recharging all the time as well, because he has a fortress. I mean, to be honest, that was like a tower defense game. Eternal was pressuring all the time. DGP was doing a great job defending. He went for this one big push with the Eagles. He was able to take down those level 3 mineshafts. But that was pretty much the only time he was able to go for a counterattack. He was forced to defend himself because Eternal was putting, you know, constant pressure on him all the time. And the real MVP, MVP heroes are definitely, and for me, King Dane. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking because we don't see that guy all the time. And today, they have seen him and he's actually worth his money. He did a pretty good job and Gloin, obviously, the Siege Master 2000 with the, with the damage output over 9000. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. We're gonna have a lot of tournament games going on in the next couple of days. Saturday, this Saturday, by the way, we're gonna have the challenge continues between Battle for Middle Earth 2 against Rise of the Witch King. All those games, all of them, are gonna be streamed on my channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. Check me out there, leave me a follow if you didn't. And don't forget to leave a like on this video, guys. The like really, really helps me. See you very soon again, and as always, stay Beyond Standards. Peace, guys.